it's time to arise and sing. If, if you can arise, let's stand and glad you're all here. Thank you, Lord. What do we have first, Hannah? So coming up this weekend, we have our women's conference. Uh, super excited. That's going to be over at the North Bend campus um, this Friday and Saturday. Um, so doors open. <laughs> doors open on Friday <laughs> at uh, 5, I believe it was. Um, there are informational cards out there as well as a sign-up sheet if any of you ladies would like to join us. Um, it should be a great time. I'm super excited to hear from our guest speaker, Allie Reich, um, and it should be wonderful. So, Also, there is a silent auction for our missionary focus, so if you would like to bring something to include in that, that'd be wonderful. All right, and September 30th through October 1st, we are having a men's 360 event happening. Uh, I, do you remember where it was? Lincoln City, thank you. And John Begorio is heading it up. We, I know most of us have had his food in the past. Mm -hmm. It's always good. It's always delicious. Um, it's going to be an awesome event. If you have any questions, um, we have an information sheet somewhere. I can't remember where it is right now, but we have it. Um, so after service, come find me, and I'll try and get that more information for you guys. All right, and then we also have later this month on the 24th, we've got um, our canning day happening with Ginger. Um, it's been super excited. I've got to go to one out of the two that we've had, and it's a lot of great information to um, allow you to preserve food correctly and safely, as well as to provide and stretch things out a little further for your family. So if you'd like to come, it's no charge, I believe. Um, donations are welcome, because it can be kind of spendy. Um, Mm-hmm. Yeah, fee for produce, um, depending on what it is. But, um, yeah, if you'd like more information on that, um, you can come see me. I can get us in contact with Ginger and just get the information you need. Um, but, yeah, that's super exciting. And then our last announcement for you guys today is we are having a rummage sale for the missions trip that us as a church is going on. Um, that is happening in October, correct? Um, and I can get you more information on that at a later date, but we are just going to be, uh, is it going to be here or at the other campus? It is going to be at the other campus. We're receiving donations. This is, uh, just to help. I believe, uh, I heard 15 of us are going to, I can say where it's at, right? Yeah. Yep. We're going to Romania as a church. Uh, 15 of us are going, um, and this is just to help fund that and to help send us. Um, so if you have donations, clothing, extra stuff laying around the house. I know I have a lot of stuff laying around the house, so I'll be bringing stuff. Um, <laughs> yeah. 
If we could have our usherettes come, we are going to uh, receive our tithes and offerings today. Let's go ahead and pray over the offering. Lord, I thank you for this opportunity to give back into your kingdom. Lord, I pray that you would bless the gift and the giver today. Lord, I pray that you would multiply uh, this offering to fit whatever you have needs for it, Lord. Lord, I pray that you would multiply it in a uh, supernatural way that we couldn't even understand. God, we love you and we praise you. Amen.
Thank you, Father. Thank you, Jesus. Father, we just thank you for this time of worship, for giving us a place to come together and, and love you together, to love on each other. Father, we praise your name for all that you do in our lives. And we, we hope that, that through your word and truth and your guidance, that we can in turn share that with others around us, across the nation, and bring light into hearts that have never seen it before. We thank you, Father, and we praise you. Uh, before we get started here, I just uh, wanted to remind you guys, at the end, we're going to take a love offering. And so uh, while our guest speaker is, is talking, uh, just uh, have it on your heart what uh, God is leading you to share with him. And without further ado, it's, my turn. it's your turn. Thank you. Thank you, everybody. When My Redeemer Lives comes on, I can't help but kind of move, and that's one of our main songs at youth camp every year. So I got all the hand motions down, too, because <laughs> I'm sorry, but they're a little more energetic than we are at youth camp, and so <laughs> yeah. it's like hard to stay still during that. Well, it's good to be here with you this morning, and I'm just going to pray and ask God to help me to help you and to help us again to see what God's doing around the world. My hope today is that you'll not know a little more about Cambodia only, but that you'll be inspired by what God is doing in many places besides Cambodian things as well. Jesus, we love you. We're so thankful for your goodness. God, I pray that you would help us to have ears to hear. God, what you would say to us today, that each person would hear by your spirit what you have for us, something that would not just stick for a moment, but would stick for a lifetime that would cause us to continue to grow and to see the world like you see it, that we would lift up our eyes and see that the fields are white unto harvest, God, and that the labors are, the harvest is plentiful, but the labors are few. Again, we love you and thank you for your goodness in Jesus' name, and everybody said? Amen. Amen. So one of the things I do, and again, it's good to be here. It's hard to believe it's five years already. Time go well, yeah, I'm home every five years, so it's easier for me to keep track. Now, of things that are more recent, do you find yourself doing this just the other day, and then you start to think, well, that was eight months ago, you know? <laughs> I was just here. Oh, that was two years ago. Ugh. But for this, I know because of my cycle is every fifth year I'm kind of home. 
but it's good to be with you. One of the things that you know that I'm involved in in Cambodia is teaching at Bible school. And the subject that maybe I like the best and that I teach every year, actually two courses of it, one that is from the beginning of the church until Reformation and one from Reformation till present, church history. It just opens your eyes. It helps us. It helps you to have perspective. It helps you to understand where our theology got its roots and some of that, how we even have the New Testament Bible. But I love doing it because the eyes just light up of the Cambodians as they start to understand where denominations came from, why we do this, why we do that kind of stuff. But you can go ahead and start the slideshow. I'm going to kind of turn sometimes so I can see what's going on here. But Cambodia, when I get to it, I always want to have Cambodian history as well. But Cambodian church history is what I call living history. Almost anything connected to the Cambodian church has taken pl place in the last 30 years. Most of the key figures are people that are my friends in this last 30 years. I've been almost 24 years now. Cambodia had the good news in about 1923. But it was very small. It was only one denomination allowed in by the French. But pretty soon... The wars came, the genocide came, the communists came, and they killed almost every last Christian until we were down to maybe 200 Christians left alive in 1991, 92. And most people had never even heard the gospel. I mean, literally, had never even heard. Well, when I arrived 23, 24 years ago, God had a plan, and the place I lived as a single guy was at our Bible school. And so... I have had the privilege of knowing every single student in the Assemblies of God plus other denominations for 24 years. And not just teaching them, but getting to hang out. These are some of my closest friends and my closest, I call them nieces and nephews. Now they're getting married and having kids. But it's just been awesome getting to invest in their lives, but friendship and relationship, because that's the key, is relationship with people. Jesus, with his disciples, relationship. Well, one of the other great things is because I know them well, and as the country director for the Assemblies of God, every Sunday, pretty much, I'm out in a different part of the country. I'm out visiting this church. People say, where's your church at? And I'm like, I'm the director. I don't have a church. I get to go out and inspire and help Cambodians that are pastoring and leading the churches around the country. And so I am what they call the tourist Christian in Cambodian. Because I'm at a different church pretty much every week getting to share. One of the awesome things that has recently happened, see this young man here? He's actually married to my former accountant that I've known since she was young too. For the very first time now, we have a Cambodian director of our Bible school. The other day, the other day, here I go again, four months ago, three months ago, before I left and came, we had a fellowship of Bible schools in the Phnom Penh area. Six different Bible schools. How many Christians were alive in 1990? 200. 200 maybe. At this fellowship of just Bible school students, first of all, the six Bible schools, every last one of them now has a Cambodian director. And that's why we could have the fellowship. They get along better than foreigners do sometimes. In that room, what an awesome thing, 250 Bible school students in a place that had only 200 Christians not even 30 years ago. And so that's an awesome thing. Go ahead and move forward. And so we're training leaders, but this is, a voca this is where you come and live. It's a residential Bible school. Well, we saw that the pastors weren't yet good at training those under them. And in a lot of places, we have home churches or house churches where the leaders could never leave their families or their work to come to a residential Bible school, but they need training. We want to have elders and leaders and youth people and children people that know the word out in the countryside and other places. So thank you, Light for the Lost and Men's Ministry that gave money so that we could have the 18 books in the Christian Life Series, thank uh, Jim Book when you see him too, into the Cambodian language. So now we have 18 books that we can get in their hand. Every two months, we teach two days, 15 hours of different books. And here you're seeing all across the country. Look how young a lot of them. Most of these are high school kids that come to these trainings. But we do have older ones and adults and old folks that 
never even got to go to school, but now get to come and learn more and more about the Bible. And it's just awesome as we train and equip more people. And this is just a graduation of one of the groups that came in through the Bible school. Go ahead and move forward. One of the other awesome things that transpired in the last 10 years is they translated and we helped them get the full life Bible or the fire Bible into the Cambodian language. What you see here is our national leaders, the ones that speak English so that they can understand some too, that now are learning how to use it to go out because how many of you know that a study Bible is useless and lets you know how to use the tools? They'd never seen a concordance. They'd never seen a cross-reference. They'd never seen study notes. They'd never seen footnotes. And so we take the nine tools. That are, that's our general superintendent and his wife. That's the other members of our national committee to train them. And now you, giving through me, are helping us to have six regional meetings where these ones are now going out encouraging the pastors but doing four hours on how to use these full-life study Bibles. So I've had so many people out and about say, my pastor preaches so much better. And do you know the number one thing was? The fire Bible. Because all they had was their Bible. There's no other books in Cambodian to explain all this stuff. And so now they have it right in their hand in one thing. And so thank you for investing in the full life study Bibles and in me so that we can go out and train people to use it. Go ahead and move forward. Book of Hope. Now, I talked about this some when I was here before. When I was a youth pastor, I did it for about 14 years. Well, we started getting access to schools. God opened up doors. Well, we wanted to get the word of God into the hand. Oregon kids, most of them have grown up not knowing anything in the Bible now. And so we partnered with Book of Hope that gave it to us so our students could go give it out in the schools. Well, when I got to Cambodia, Almost nobody had even heard the name of Jesus. Literally, they didn't know the historic name of Jesus, let alone what he taught. Well, God laid in my heart, get the book of hope in the Cambodian language. And I worked together with the Bible Society that owns the rights and things to the Bible. And we did it with one book of hope and started printing and getting it out and helping to put it in the hands of young people. And God is so good as we get that out, and they take it home. It's not like here where you kind of throw things away because you get too much junk mail and all that. They take this home, and the name of it is Book of Hope, and they want hope in Buddhism. So this girl here, she was 16-year-old youth pastor, the only one in the country. Well, God laid on her heart and mind that she should take over Book of Hope and start to run it because we're always trying to train up nationals to do the work of ministry, and then we get out of the way. Well, she is awesome. She has been voted the best trainer for Book of Hope in the whole world. Her idea here, toothbrushes, and I told you a little of this before, buy toothbrushes, train on how to brush your teeth because nobody ever had a toothbrush in the countryside. Well, when the government heard and saw what she was doing, they said, here's a letter that you can go to any public school in the country if you will teach them to brush their teeth. Wow. And so she, through her, just God touching her heart, she's training all sorts of people. We have had access to go in. And I wish I could tell you all the stories of those who've been touched, their lives changed, when all of a sudden they start to read for themselves who Jesus is and what he taught. Do you think poor people would like Jesus? Yeah. He was against corruption. He was against leaders that oppressed. He was for people and bringing hope to those that are hopeless. And in Buddhism, they are hopeless because all you can hope for is a better life in the next life. If you're poor, it's because you were a bad person in your life before. I told you one of our other visions is to train young people, young leaders. Well, we now have a thing called Cultivate. Every three months, she chooses between six and eight from non-denominational young people that are interested in being trained to do more ministry, children's work, and youth work. And these are some of the more recent students. Those are all from our schools and orphanage, which you'll see a little later. But God is helping through her. Sometime go online and look up One Hope Cambodia. See all the stuff. She's got all, I'm such an idiot when it comes to tech. She's got so many good children's things, Sunday school, this and that, that they've done in the Cambodian language. Go on, I challenge you, and look at it. You'll go like, wow, this stuff's awesome. Go ahead and move forward. Again, I was youth pastor. Well, one of the things that God laid on my heart to do was youth camp. I'd seen what it did in people's lives. How many people, their lives were transformed when you have time to get away from the normal and to hear from God. And so we start, but do you know, uh, your pastor's wife, Kola, 
was part of what kicked this off. We had a team from Oregon come over with Jim Leach, who will be here sometime soon too, and we brought 25 young people from Oregon. I got 26 Cambodians from, thir that's all we had was 13 churches at the time, to send two students each to come to a outreach thing where we did vacation Bible schools. We did two things. All of a sudden, these kids who came, kids, they're young adults, were inspired. They can do outreaches. They don't have to have white people come to do it. Second one was they got to know each other. They'd never met other young people that loved Jesus. And it really started the Assemblies of God Cambodia being a nationwide kind of thing. Otherwise, it was 13 isolated churches. So this church, well, they weren't here yet, but it played a big part in some of it. Maybe they were here already. So at the camp, these kids, again, that really haven't known many other young people that are Christians, often they are the only Christian in their family, come together in the morning. We have discipleship and training where they learn more about the Bible, more about different things. In the afternoon is things to interact together. In the evenings, we focus on three things. Worship, the Word, and respond to God. And what an awesome time. The last night is always the baptism of the Holy Spirit. It is a blast to watch people that have never ever seen somebody else get filled in the Holy Spirit seek God and get filled by the power of the Holy Spirit and go back to their place as transformed pastors. Wow, they're a different person when they left. I wish you all could be there to be a part of that. And that's why I say I get into this because they, they get into the different songs and stuff there. And seeking God, and God moves when we seek him. Go ahead and move forward. The other great thing about the camps was developing leaders. Here is my first group that helped me with the very first camp. Out of them, they're doing awesome things now. But what we did is invest in these leaders and let them run different parts of camp. Well, now what we started doing was we have 16 team leaders from around the country come get trained and help in camp. Each one of them is responsible for 20 students during the camp. So 320, whatever, and help with 20 students each. And so you see these different leaders. We spend time with them, invest in them, so that they can in turn start to be children's and youth leaders with confidence back in their own kind of places. This is when we took them up to do some training. Maybe you remember Billy, he's out of Klamath Falls that was there um, with us at the time too. What's happened now is we've started having district youth leaders, and these are the district for the southern district south of Phnom Penh. This is from the Phnom Penh and the counties that are around Phnom Penh, we brought them in for training as well to be youth and children's workers, particularly youth. This is another place down to the south where it's not only the top leaders, but they each brought some leaders also to get trained, and then they helped me with the camp. Well, then I saw the ones that God was really bringing to the top that were gifted and took them to the Philippines to be involved in these all of Asia youth training things. And you see them, that girl in the middle with the blue shirt? She translated now the Vietnamese full-life study Bible, and now she is a missionary in Cambodia, reaching Vietnamese people in Cambodia. And so from this, and those that we took over and invested in, we now have the Assemblies of God National Youth Department, and they do most of the work. It's great. I get to just be their advisor and go hang out at camp like I'm still 20 years old or something. And so here are the different national leaders. Yeah, thank God. And again, thank you because it's your giving, investing in me so I can be there to be involved in things like this. Go ahead and move forward. Continue to pray for them as we get ready for our first camp in three years because of COVID. See these little kids? Now, everybody thinks I work at an orphanage. I don't work at an orphanage. I'm the director for the country, and AG has an orphanage. But from the beginning, look at the girl particularly on the far left, the little one smiling on my lap. I would go down when I was doing language study because Cambodia has more holidays than any place on the planet. And so we didn't have class. So I went down because kids are great to practice with because they don't use too big a sentences and too big a words, and they're quick to forgive you if you say things wrong. Well, the kids start to get older. They start to graduate. And I'm the one adult that they've known because we've had different directors down there. Well, the director at the time said, we need to do something so they can go to university. We can't just ditch them now that they're graduated from high school. And so we opened up student housing dorms in Phnom Penh where all the universities were. Four, six, eight at a time every year, different ones would come up. After the second year, the guy who started the program left. 
Since that time, you, Oregon churches, have helped me help all these students get university degrees and get four years of discipleship inside our dorms. It's right next to my house. And God has done incredible things in and through. Now, obviously, some young people choose to go their own way or do different things. But my family has grown and grown. And now when we get together, it's not just them, but it's their husbands and wives and their kids and things like that. And God is using many of them to continue to help to change their churches, to change Cambodia as well. Such fun, huh? So I'm single, but I got a lot of kids. Now, I've got a lot of ex-wives, 17 of them, because at every wedding, the parents are more important than the kids, so they have to have a parent, so they usually ask me to be the father. There, I'm standing back, but i got to have a wife for the day, so they choose a teacher or a missionary or somebody else (laughs) to be my wife for the day. So if this is on tape, please help explain what I just said to other people. And so... We have these celebrations when they're wedding. I mean, these kids were dead because they were orphans. They would have been dead without this. He is now a doctor. She is a nurse. You giving helped him to be a doctor. And it's great to have doctors that care. This young lady is now a full doctor. stuff. That's an Oregon team. The doctors would come, allow them to gain experience working with them and the the medical teams that come and are with me. This guy... Started out as a designer, architect. Now he's a general contractor, helped to build a hospital, two international schools, a bunch of churches. She is like the boss. She has been the secretary for the National Assemblies of God for 12 years now. We all know the secretary is the boss. Okay, the girl that was sitting on my lap that was smiling is the one with the black shirt that's uh, the, on my right-hand side on there. But these are teacher Uh, administrator, accountant. We have like seven accountants. We have like 14 teachers. We have two doctors, one public health trainer. We got all, thank you so much for investing and praying. So these are the national youth directors of the Assemblies of God, and both he and she, the one in the white shirt and the pinkish, grew up in the orphanage. They went to our Bible school, and now they are getting their master's degree in the Philippines to come back and continue to teach at the Bible school and to be the national youth directors as well. Go ahead and move forward. So from the beginning, when, we, when the government allowed us to go in, they had us help with schools in places that were super poor that had no schools. And we did it in partnership with a group called Mission of Mercy that's now called One Child that sponsors kids These kids and all the other kids in the village have a school and get to go to school because of people that give through. And so I get to invest in over 3,000 kids on a regular basis, and my staff does lots of it with these kids. But the great thing about the schools, even though they're public schools, because we help, they let us teach the Bible one hour a week, every week in these public schools. And as they grow, they know the word of God. In junior high and high school, they start to give their lives to Christ. And a number of our leaders and Bible school students and pastors now are people that went through these schools that were there. In Cambodia, it's supposed to be free, but the teachers won't teach you if you don't pay them money. If you don't give something each day. And so at our schools, every kid in all the, and it's been the epicenter for the start of the church around our schools. Zero. That's how many Christians, how many churches were in these areas where our schools are when we started them. Zero. But the early missionaries shared with one or two that were their leaders, and they became Christians, and they started sharing with other people as well. In the area of this school here, there are now almost 60 churches. Every single village has a church, then they went to the next village and went there. So if you ever send a youth team or other team with me over there, These are the schools you'll be at. This is Terry Miller, who's the pastor at Hood River, when he brought a group over to help teach English and invest in the kids because English is the international language. And if kids want to advance themselves, they need English. And when you guys come, it inspires them. I mean, what poor country kid gets native speakers from America to come and be at their school? And so God has just done some awesome things. Well, one of the other great things more recently is student dorms. I saw that we were losing a lot of our Christian kids from the countryside when they came to Phnom Penh because they got a scholarship. They could maybe go to college, but they had to live with a relative that wasn't a believer that wouldn't let them do Christian things and made them do Buddhist stuff. 
So I saw what was happening with our dorm for the orphanage kids think, let's do that for students from the poor rural areas as well. Well, I worked together with four churches in Phnom Penh area, and they have dorms. These kids go to those churches, but more than that, in the dorms, they get discipled by these pastors or leaders. For four years, kind of like Chi Alpha, they're with us. And we get to invest. There's no such thing as on-campus living in Cambodia. you got to have a place to stay. But just look at all these human resources that God's developing because, again, this all is because you give through me to be able to be in Cambodia and support different things like this. I live cheap so that we can take your money and really invest. Look at these young people. Isn't that exciting to see how many love Jesus? Now, how many of them? Zero were Christians in their area. And now, getting a large army. Well, not only do they grow themselves, they take the Christian Life programs, they're just graduating. This is one of the churches graduating from Christian Life. But they're helping to plant other churches as well. Just think of all these college students. They go to college full-time, they work full-time, they're involved in their churches, and they're helping to plant other. This is at one of the outreach areas in the outskirts of Phnom Penh, where there's a lot of slum kind of kids in the area. And they go once a week out there, but this is one of their more bigger outreaches. But they go every week after church has done their own church to help to do services and reach out to the people in that area. They also now are going up to the north where we don't have anything, and they go back to help at their own churches. This is one of the outreaches of one of the other churches that's in a different part of Phnom Penh. Again, the church is very young in Cambodia. The pastor is the lady in the black down at the very bottom. Go ahead and move forward. Teen Challenge, you've probably heard some about this. Some time back, we had a man that was a Cambodian-American come, and he was from the Assemblies of God, and he saw kids that lived along the streets that were hooked on glue, that their pimps were making sure that they were hooked on glue, and so he helped us to start Teen Challenge, where we usually have between 15 and 30 students at any one time that are coming there to help them to get off drugs through what? Through Through Jesus. There's nothing else. The government doesn't really have a way. They try, but they see that this is a way that really we're just renewing our contract with the government right now as we do it. Thank you. I don't know if it's this church or the one I'm at a little later, but somebody gives every month to be able to help with this. Teen Challenge is running awesome, but it's hard to find funding for things for boys. And so Oregon has been awesome. I put out a plea because we are completely out of money for people or churches or home groups to give $4,500 sometime during 2022, 23, or 24. And already I've found funding for 22 and 23 already and now praying that God will help with 24. And I want to thank Pacific Northwest Teen Challenge. They are taking us on to be like their child And they are sending leaders over in December to see more what we need and how they can work. And they help to provide six months worth of funding. They have to go raise their own, but they still invested in help. And again, we are not old people. Look how young some of those are that are in Teen Challenge there. We are Teen Challenge and Pre-Teen Challenge. Go ahead and move forward. Again, I was at the Bible school for a long time. Everybody who came through, well, one of my great joys is these are the national leaders, the Assemblies of God, Cambodia, the junior superintendent, the assistant. I was a part of helping them to get ordained because they didn't have any ordained ministers to do ordination. And now they lead themselves. I'm their advisor, but it's awesome as they take more and more responsibility. This is when they went down to do a dedication of a new church down south. And so one of my favorite things, and now we're starting to have districts. I led them to start saying, let's not just do the national, cut the country into six parts and districts. And so these are district leaders in one area. These are district leaders that came in from five of the different areas for training that we got to invest in our lives. And again, it's God, it's you, it's us. God's doing awesome things in Cambodia in a place that didn't even have a history really 30 years ago, has leaders that are around the country. Go ahead and move. So I also coordinate the missionaries for the Assemblies of God. We've got like 12 units that are American. But it's not just the Americans. I get the privilege. We are the first kind of place in the world where the Assemblies of God from all sorts of 
countries work together to start just one Assemblies of God Cambodia. And so there's Americans like this that I work with, but some of my best missionaries are from the Philippines, and they've been there a long time too. They started sending even before I got there, and now we have like nine units from the Philippines that are missionaries just like I am, that are planting churches, that are doing discipleship, that are involved in people's lives. This one came three months after I did, had all his kids while he was there, up in the north of Cambodia. Well, the newest and awesome thing is Latin America. Latin America, the church is strong. God has done awesome things in the Assemblies of God the last hundred years. Well, now they're not sending missionaries just to other Latin American places in Spanish. They saw we need to go to the unreached. We need to go to North Africa. We need to go to out where the Buddhist world is. And so my fun, the new ones are from El Salvador, from Mexico, from Costa Rica, from Bolivia. I now have one from Guatemala that are there with us as well. Learning Cambodian, learning culture. They are just moved out a month ago to start planting a church where we've never had the church before. The family on the left there, a year ago, moved up to the far north near Vietnam and Laos to start a church where we've never been before. My goal and the goal of the National Church is to have a, provin a mother church in every provincial capital. They moved down to the southern coast to start one down there. 26 provinces, we want to have a mother church in every single one of them, and most of the missionaries that are going are going from Latin America, Ecuador, they are just moved up to be a little further north and maybe go down to another place. Just recently, Romania. Romania is the fastest growing sending nation in the world for the Assemblies of God. And so this young couple was just with me to check out Cambodia, and hopefully in the next year, they'll be joining our team. These are just some of the places where the El Salvadorians and the Latin Americans are going to plant the church. And you'll see that this girl started about nine years ago, and now you're going to see what her church is like. And the kids are growing. That's probably six years ago. And now look at those that are becoming the leaders of her church right there. That was taken about a year and a half ago. Now the dedication, 10 years, now they have this building. And it was churches from Oregon that gave the seed money to get that church started. They gave $15,000 well, after that, others caught the vision, and for $150,000, they have this huge, nice church that also has room for a school. This is one that's been started only one year up towards Vietnam. Look at the people. There were zero Christians. There was nobody. There was no church. And within the year, this is down in the slums down at the south, and those are the missionaries from Bolivia that are down there. He knows how to take trash and turn it into treasure. And so he teaches these people how to do it as he goes out. And what's he give out? Stuff from Book of Hope. And so that they can read and know for themselves who Jesus is and what he taught. Go ahead and move forward. Now this is one of my newest and most fun things. Because our country works with lots of countries, we're the first place, they asked me to be on the World Assemblies of God Missions Commission. The main goal of this is encourage the churches in the developing world to send missionaries. For too long, they thought, we're too poor to do missions. Well, I'm telling you, the church is stronger in Latin America than it is in America. Yeah. It is stronger in Africa than it is in America. And so they need to say, hey, we're not too poor. And so I get to work with these men and these women and leaders from around the world this was in Madrid, Spain. What an exciting thing to be in a missions commissioning for developing world countries. It was awesome as different ones came up and they prayed for them, but it was also sad. Every last one of them, when they got up, apologized. We're so sorry that we don't have enough money to do wells and to do feeding programs and to do farming and da-da-da-da-da. And I'm thinking, how sad are they? is it that they think that's missions. But the awesome thing was right after that, what'd they say? We may not have a big budget. We can't do all that stuff. But what we have is faith, the word of God, and the power of the Holy Spirit. And that's more important than having a big budget, amen? amen. Going in the power of God, and they are helping to change the world. We need to change our mindset some. 
Most American Christians and Assemblies of God people aren't aware of what awesome things God has done around the world through missions that you've given to for years and years and years. Could you go back to that? Okay. Look at those numbers. Just in our, these are just Assemblies of God churches in those countries. Argentina with 2,100. Brazil, 124,000 Assembly of God churches. Mexico, 5,000. Nicaragua, 1,250. Venezuela, almost 2,000. Bolivia, El Salvador, over 2,000 churches. Guatemala, 3,100 just Assemblies of God churches. Then look at Africa. We forget that the gospel went to much of Africa during colonial times, and many believed. Burkina Faso, 5,400 Assembly of God churches. Ghana, Ivory Coast, Kenya, over 10,000 churches. Malawi, Mozambique, that's only been open from communism for 30 years, has over 6,000 just Assembly of God churches. Nigeria, 16,000, more than America has. Tanzania, almost 7,600. 7, I mean, Uganda. It doesn't need to be getting missionaries. It should be sending, amen? amen. 10,000 churches. And so our big goal, and be praying, because next week I head, in one week I fly to El Salvador, and I'll be in El Salvador, Honduras, in Nicaragua, Costa Rica, uh, and Panama to visit with some of the leaders, and then Colombia for our next meeting. And we're meeting in Colombia because the biggest mission force that we have for this next decade and decades is from Latin America. And all the missions leaders from all of Latin America will be together in Colombia. So be praying for those meetings, which are the end of this month, the last week of this month. My trip in Central America will be in a week, but then praying that God will ch that every 10 churches can send one missionary. Imagine how many new missionaries if every 10 churches could send one missionary. Well, that's just some of what God's been up to, and I want to say thank you because, again, I go because, what? I'm sent. How do people go unless they're sent? I have opportunities like this because you pray. Please take my prayer card and continue to pray. I just want to say, th and I hope you're inspired today, that God is at work. And in a place like Cambodia, where there was 200 Christians, some 30 years later, there's now over 300,000 believers. It's not an AG thing. It's not a Ken thing. It's the kingdom of God. Amen. And so I just want to pray to, and give it over to whoever. It must be you're coming up. Jesus, we love you. Thank you for your word. And pray that you would just continue to bless this congregation, help them to reach their community, but also at the same time to continue to have a heart to reach around the world. I just ask this in Jesus' name. Everybody said? Amen. Amen. So I'm sorry that I have to run off quick. Okay. Yeah. Well, they may be on a little, but yeah. So a lot of it is they don't have so much stuff, and they don't depend on their stuff to be their God. Thank you. And people are sure of the gospel. Sorry that I have to run off so quick. But I don't Praise know God. Know. Thank you for sharing with us. All right. Oh, what a wonderful mission. What a wonderful outcome. I mean, how do you wrap your head around the, the lightning speed at which they're moving in other countries? What if we could move that fast in our own country to reach that many hearts that fast? We'd be a whole other nation, wouldn't we? So... Heavenly Father, I just thank you that you're moving in such amazing ways in so many places, that you're taking the, what our missionaries are sharing and in turn sending those countries to share it with others, causing that chain reaction, causing that, that pay it forward, forward mentality. Father, this is how we're going to reach every heart in this world. Father, I just pray that you would, you would just continue to strengthen our people, strengthen your children to, to go on and, and bring your word to every, 
every dark corner in our, in our world and to bring light into hearts and love. Father, we thank you for today. We thank you for your good word. And Father, if anyone out there is uh, in need of a fresh touch from you, Father, I pray that they would be, uh, they would, they would uh, come up and, and, uh, and, and just spend some time with you. Let us pray for them. Father, we thank you and we praise you and we look forward to what you're going to do in the future. Amen.